Hello, my name is Kathleen Weiss. Today I will be discussing the initiative and referendum process in Arizona. First, I would like to share the basic definitions of an initiative and referendum. An initiative is defined as the method in which voters may propose new laws or amend existing laws through gathering signatures from registered voters to place the issue on the ballot. Overall, it is a process that allows citizens to bypass state legislator, le legislature by proposing and amending laws. A referendum is defined as the method in which voters may veto a law by gathering signatures from registered voters to place the issue on the ballot. Moreover, the referendum process allows citizens to refer a law that passed the legislature to the ballot for voters to decide whether to uphold or repeal the law. In order to create a statewide initiative or referendum petition in Arizona, an individual or organization must follow five specific steps. First, one must establish or designate a non-candidate political committee that will act as the sponsor. Second, one must apply for an initiative or referendum serial number from the Secretary of State's office. The application must include a 100-word summary of the provisions of the petition and a copy of the proposed title and content of the petition. Next, one must obtain an official initiative or referendum petition form from the Secretary of State's office in person. The Secretary of State's office will also issue an official petition form in electronic format and conduct a tutorial on how to complete the form. Fourth, one must register any paid or non-resident circulators before circulating any petition. Lastly, one must file a given number of valid petition signatures on the form by the applicable deadline. Next, I will compare and contrast initiatives and referendums. Initiatives and referendums are similar in that they share the same goal of allowing citizens to take active and participatory roles in the democratic legislature, legislative process. Moreover, initiatives and referendums give more power to the people in Arizona's government and legislation. Other similarities include those related to creating an initiative and referendum. Moreover, the steps to create a referendum and initiative are similar. Initiatives and referendums both require an individual organization to designate a sponsor, apply for a serial number, and collect a form at the Secretary of State's office, and circulate a petition and acquire registered voters' signatures. They also both require a specific number of signatures in proportion to the voter votes cast for candidates for governor at the last general election. However, initiatives and referendums are different in their approach and origin. For an initiative, citizens will draft a proposal to add or change an amendment to the Constitution. With regard to referendums, they originate with the government when they propose legislation to the people. Then, citizens will create a petition to veto the legislation. Ultimately, the primary difference between initiative and referendum is that they are simply two different processes with different effects on state legislation. Other differences include that initiatives and referendums require different percentages of signatures related to the votes cast for candidates for governor at the last general election. Overall, although the core processes and approach to initiative and referendums differ, they both have the similar goal of enabling citizens to have a voice in the state's legislation legislation. Now I will discuss the pros and cons of initiatives and referendums. One pro of initiatives and referendums is that it promotes citizen participation and engagement in public decisions. Furthermore, it helps individuals express their personal concerns and suggestions and also encourages citizens to care for the public good. Similarly, they also give voice and control to its citizens, enabling them to protect their interests and rights from government power. Moreover, it, present, it prevents the state government from gaining too much power and instead balances it between the government and its people. Another pro of initiatives is that it enables citizens to force the government to address issues and legislation that they may otherwise choose to ignore. An additional benefit of initiatives and render referendums is that it allows citizens to separate out their preferences and vote on particular measures based on their specific values and beliefs. Oftentimes, candidates will get elected and commit themselves to legislations, legislation and issues supported by their given political party. However, individuals often may agree with a large portion of a political party's beliefs, but may disagree with others. 
Initiatives and referendums provide voters with a method of decision making that will conform more closely to citizens' exact preferences. Another pro of initiatives and referendums is that they allow individuals to respond to unexpected circumstances at any given time. It gives the power to the citizens to make drastic changes of political direction and legislation in unfamiliar situations when needed. Now I will move on to cons or disadvantages. One con of initiatives and referendums is that they demand a relatively high level of knowledge of social and economic issues that can be complex. There are often concerns that voters may not always have the understanding or necessary information needed to make well-informed decisions about such important issues. Another disadvantage of, an, of initiatives and referendums is voter irrationality. Individuals do not always vote with a clear and decisive question in mind. Oftentimes, unrelated factors such as the beliefs of political, political parties can influence individual thinking and votes. An additional con is voter fatigue. Citizens often do not have the time nor the knowledge to make decisions on political matters and disengage from the political process. This will in turn leave legislative decisions in the hands of the small yet intense minority groups that turn out to vote. Thus, decision, decisions will not always reflect the beliefs of the majority of the population. Situations like these generally occur when direct democracy methods are utilized too often to decide complex and technical issues. Another con is that referendums and initiatives may favor those with money and resources needed to maintain a strong campaign. Those without the power and resources may be unable to successfully establish a petition for the ballots. In turn, the rich are more able to promote their own financial and social interests at the expense of the common good. For this last section, I will be explaining how initiatives and referendums support the idea of direct democracy as outlined in the Arizona Constitution. According to an article by the International IDEA, the de definition of direct democracy is a form of government in which laws and policies are decided by the public instead of a body of elected representatives. Furthermore, direct democracy describes the rules and processes that allow eligible voters to participate and have a voice on a proposed law, amendment, or policy decision. The main forms of direct democracy are initiatives and refer referendums as included in the Arizona Constitution. Referendums and initiatives are enable voters to directly participate in law and policy decisions. They both give citizens a direct vote on a specific political, constitutional, or legislative issue. As mentioned earlier, an, an initiative is a method in which voters may propose new laws or amend existing laws through gathering signatures. A referendum is the method in which voters may veto a law by gathering signatures. Both mechanisms clearly align and support the definition of a direct democracy, given that citizens are given the power to make laws, to make decisions on laws, amendments, and policy. Thank you for listening.